What's up everybody, it's Joe here with Joseph Blake Photography and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the rumor of a new Mac Mini, not just a new Mac Mini, but a newly redesigned Mac Mini. Real quick, before we jump into the info about the new Mac Mini, my name is Joe, this is my channel, Joseph Blake Photography, where we talk about tech and gear and content creation and everything that we use to create that content. Whether that's for here on YouTube, social media, whether you're shooting and developing weddings or corporate videos, or maybe you're just doing skate videos for your friends and family. That's all content creation. And that's what we talk about here on the channel. So if that's the kind of stuff that you're into, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if at the end of the video, you feel like I've done a good job, go ahead and hit the like button too. That helps the algorithm to know that I'm doing the right thing. Lastly, socials all down below, but we'll talk about that at the end. Let's get into talking about this new potential Mac Mini. Okay, so we've had the Mac Mini in its current iteration for 14 years. <laughs> we've had the Intel version, and then we got into the Apple Silicon version with the M1 in 2020. But we've had the Intel version for 10 years before that, and it has been the exact same thing. It has been this little nine by nine by one and a half inch little silver puck. I guess it's not really a puck, right? It's like a medium sized dinner plate. It's a salad plate, basically designed in kind of a squircle that Apple is known to do. But over the years, things have changed on the inside quite a bit. And the most recent refresh that we have for the Mac Mini was in 2023 when we got the M2 version. And the M2, for content creators specifically, came with improved media and code engines, more I.O., and a little bit more beefy power. But the other thing was we also got the M2 Pro available in the Mac Mini. So you could buy a M2 Mac Mini at the base model with I think eight gigabytes of RAM and probably 256 gigs of SSD storage for, I think it was six, I think right now it's about 600 bucks. Although if you go on Amazon, you can probably find it for considerably less. And I'm sure that those discounts will continue going. But this year we're gonna be getting MacBooks with M4s. We've got, already got an iPad Pro with an M4. Where's our Mac Mini with the M4? Because right now you can configure a Mac mini with the max of 32 gigabytes of storage, the 12 core CPU, and you can go as high as eight terabytes of storage. But you can spend thousands of dollars on this thing, but it's got a two year old chip. Where's the M4? Where's that neural engine AI powered goodness that we're seeing in the iPad Pro? The rumor here is that we will be getting it in a new form factor this year, which makes perfect sense. So the base M2 right now that comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage is an eight core CPU with a 10 core GPU and a 16 core neural engine. And that's the model that you can get for 600 bucks. But when people ask me who are looking to get into content creation and they want something that's reliable and easy, I tell them to look at the Mac mini and then just upgrade the RAM and the storage, but not the storage too far. <laughs> just put enough on there so that you're good and then get some fast external USB 4 storage. And the M chip that we find in the iPad Pro, which is a M4, like the base M4, it's not an M4 Pro, is a 10 core CPU, but it also has a 10 core GPU. And that chip is, according to Apple, offers one and a half times the CPU performance as an M2. They're also claiming that the graphics performance that's coming from the M4 at the same kind of speed and operational capability is twice as power efficient as the M2, which is interesting when you talk about it in the context of the iPad where battery constraints are an issue, but the mini is plugged into the wall. So I'm going to assume that they will be able to really ramp up the power of the GPU side of things when it is in a desktop style environment. And again, we're just talking about the vanilla variant of the M4, not the Pro version, that could be as much as two times faster and more powerful. They also specifically touted in the M4 its media accelerators. So in addition to H.264, HEVC, and ProRes, it's bringing acceleration for the AV1 code. And much of the marketing around the iPad Pro was geared towards Logic and Final Cut Pro which tells me that this will be a media-centered or creation-centered chip. And if you put this in a mini and really juice up the power that the chip can take because of the fact really heat in that package or by power because it's plugged into the wall, 
I think there's a lot that they'll be able to deliver for content creators, even at the base level, even at that inexpensive level. So now the form factor of the unit itself, right? The mini has always been mini and it's ubiquitous, right? You just stack them up. I know people who put them as headless encoders or servers all over the place. They really can be used as glue in a lot of different media operations. The rumor here is that this thing will be as small as potentially an Apple TV, which is about a 50% reduction in overall footprint. And then it might be just a little bit taller, which tells me that they may be adding a bit more in the way of airflow management. Again, pointing towards the ability for it to handle a bit more power and a little bit more capability. Right now they're saying that you're gonna have a power port and three USB-C Thunderbolt 4 style ports probably four or five in the Pro variant, along with HDMI 2.1. And while that's gonna be the story here on the redesign of the physical case, it's going to be so small, which is super cool. I think the fact that the M4, which was touted as a media and content creation chip, that's the thing in games, right? That's the thing that it's really been pointed towards in its iPad Pro announcement that when you then put it in the package like a mini, that they know are content creators who are small, like us, and then just juice it up a little bit, right? <laughs> Give it a little bit more juice, a little bit more power, a little bit more heat, with it being plugged into the wall and not being battery or heat constrained. And then you get the pro model. And then you're able to devote the studio, if that's something that they continue with, as the max and ultra style or size for the Mac mini footprint. So obviously we're going to be seeing Macs with M4s and M4 Pros and M4 Maxes and M4 Ultras over the next 12 months. The iPad Pro is not gonna be the only device that gets it. Interesting that they went with the iPad Pro first. And as I get more information about that, I will do more videos there. But the M4, I feel, because of the way that it was marketed, is really the first, in my mind, the first iterative step past what the M1 was as a jump from Intel for specifically small content creators. If you are shooting in 4K and you are outputting to YouTube or even delivering to clients, doing small in-house corporate or marketing video operations, or whatever it is, maybe you do your own video and stuff and audio, or maybe you're a music creator, this is this would be the next potential upgrade if you have an M1 product now. I say that as someone who has an M1 Max, my laptop right here, right? The one that I use every day, that I edit every video on this channel for the last three years is an M1 Max MacBook Pro 14 inch. And I can tell you that the M4 and the potential for the M4 Pro and M4 Max is the first M series chip uh, that they are coming out with that potentially entices me to upgrade. But we'll see what the rest of the specs are. We'll see what the rest of the information is. That's all I've got for you uh, today. If that's the kind of thing that you're into, if that's the kind of information that you're looking for, go ahead and hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell so that you're notified when I send out new videos. And please hit the like button if you thought that this was a quality video for you and had the information that you were looking for. It really helps to tell the algorithm that my channel is doing the right thing and it's a great way to support the channel. Another free way that you can support the channel is to follow me down in all of these social media links down below. And if you're looking to do more than just support me in a free way, I have opened up memberships for the channel and I have begun releasing some of my content just a little bit early for those folks. If you're really into that, I'll also be doing some lives and some chats and that sort of thing. Last but not least, you can follow me over on my website. I've got a blog over at jblake.photo forward slash blog. And yeah, thanks again for watching. I appreciate all of you. Appreciate everybody that's supported me and this channel for the last, it's been seven years now. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.